All right, so the topics that we'll cover today, we'll look at the functions and features of Kaltura. We'll look at some of the benefits, some of the reasons you might use Kaltura. Uh, and then um, most of the session, we'll be taking a look at how these things work uh, as integrated in Blackboard. I will take your questions and um, I'll point you to some resources. Now I'm going to resist the urge to show every little detail, every little feature of Kaltura because we'd be here for at least two hours. I know because I did a dry run and that's about what it took. Um, but so if you see something that you're wondering about or you see something you want to know more about, feel free, to, free, feel free to ask a question. Also, obviously, feel free to get into the system, poke around, click buttons. It's, it's pretty hard to break the system. Uh, you can delete the videos that you create. So by all means, create some sample videos, um, try some things out, um, uh, and, uh, and let us know, of course, if you need help. All right, so let's get started by first talking about what is Kaltura. So Kaltura is a new campus-wide video platform at NIU. Uh, it's comprehensive in the sense that it allows you to upload video, create video, publish video to your courses, share it with your courses and your students. Uh, there are edit functions right in Kaltura that we'll look at today. Um, uh, you can create quizzes with Kaltura and other kinds of, of interaction to keep your students engaged in your video content, and it integrates tightly with Blackboard. Basically speaking, Kaltura is a campus-wide video platform. So what can you do? So I've already mentioned a couple of these. So one of the things you can do with Kaltura is upload, store, and share your existing video content created outside of Kaltura. So if you attended the Kaltura Capture workshop last week, we talked about one of the features of Kaltura, Kaltura Capture, that allows you to capture media. It allows you to capture your screen activity, your audio and your webcam, and that um, capture recording is moved into the, your media library and you can share from there. Another feature of Kaltura is that you can use content that is outside of Kaltura. So, uh, maybe it's a, um, a smartphone video that you took, or a video that you took with a video camera, or uh, a video that you published out of PowerPoint, uh, or some other video content that you have. You can upload that video to Kaltura, you can store it there, you can edit it there, and of course then you can share it with your courses. You can publish it to your students uh, via Blackboard. You can create new videos using a webcam. Uh, webcam and your microphone. There's a, a tool uh, called Express Capture that lets you capture quick um, headshot videos with your webcam if you're just trying to get some quick information out to students. And then of course, Capture a Capture that allows you to incorporate your webcam, your narration, and your screen recording, uh, if you like that. You can do simple video edits directly in Kaltura. I mentioned that. We can create quizzes. Those quizzes can be integrated into your Blackboard gradebook or not. Uh, that's your choice, and we'll look at that at the end of our session today. You can also create playlists and course media galleries, and we'll look at that as well. So a couple of, uh, of interesting kind of uh, um, points or additional benefits of using Kaltura. Uh, for one thing, uh, using a video platform like Kaltura allows you to store your video in the tool in Kaltura and not in directly in your Blackboard course. So the content is shared with the Blackboard course. It's embedded in the course or linked to the course, but putting that video content there has no effect on your course quota. If you've done any um, work with video in your courses in the past where you've directly uploaded video content to your course, you might have found uh, pretty quickly that that fills up your course quota in Blackboard. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, the um, another benefit of using Kaltura is that there are some pretty robust video analytics. So uh, you can see um, an aggregate uh, analytics. So you can see on aggregate how many, what's the drop off percentage, how much of my videos are students watching, how many views am I getting. And then you can also look at the student level and see is this student watching this video? How much of this video did this student watch? And so on. Because uh, Kaltura is uh, integrated with Blackboard, then Blackboard connects that student information to the views and clicks. Um, of the Kaltura video me uh, media. Kaltura has very good auto captioning and uh, also has a, a nice transcript feature. Um, 
the transcripts and captions are also pretty easily editable. Uh, students can create, students can also use Kaltura captures or Kaltura, excuse me. And so that's one of the really nice things about this process and, and about this tool is that it's integrated into Blackboard. It's available for all students, staff, and faculty. And so your students can use Kaltura to create media for assignments, discussions, projects, and they can, they can do it in the same ways that you can. They can upload media, they can capture media with their smartphones, they can uh, publish uh, MP4s out of any tool and upload to Kaltura, they can use Kaltura Capture to capture their screen. Um, and so uh, another benefit is that students can use that uh, to create media for your course. All right, so here's what we're going to cover in the demonstration. First, we're going to go over several of the ways that you can create content, and we're not going to hit all of them. Again, we'd be here for a couple of hours at least. Um, we're going to talk specifically about media upload, uh, something called Express Capture. We're also going to talk about something called YouTube, in YouTube indexing, which is kind of an interesting feature. Um, and I'll just mention again Kaltura Capture, though we won't go all the way through that process. Um, once we have some content to play with, we're going to look at the ways that you can modify your content in your media library, the video settings and, and, and properties. We'll look at how you can edit videos and creating quizzes. And we're gonna let creating quizzes go to the end of the session. And we're gonna talk about how you can embed that content in your course. There are essentially three ways. You can create a link, you can embed a playable thumbnail, or you can use and or, you can use something called a media gallery. All right. So. Any questions at the moment before we start uh, looking at the tool uh, as integrated into Blackboard? All right, so anytime you have a question, just go ahead and drop it in the chat pod. If it's something that Scott and Megan can answer, they might just answer you right away or they might pass the question to me. Uh, whether or not I pause for questions, they'll interrupt me if I'm rambling on. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna share my screen with you. All right, so we start our, our access to Kaltura is via Blackboard. So uh, I'm gonna log into Blackboard. The first thing you wanna keep in mind is, uh, and this is sometimes where if you haven't used Kaltura for a while, you might forget this little point, and that is don't jump immediately into the courses panel. We're gonna jump immediately to the tools panel. So this little tools panel, is where you can find the Kaltura My Media Library. All right, so log into Blackboard, choose Tools, and use Kaltura My Media. And Megan and Scott, um, if you could interrupt me with um, on on mic to let me know if there's a question. Uh, I hear the notifications, but I can't see the messages. So just uh, go ahead and interrupt me if you think that I should stop and answer a question. All right, so when you click those uh, items, you'll end up in your media library. It's called My Media. Um, in the My Media section, you'll see any media that you have created or uploaded in the system. I have some here. If you haven't used Kaltura before, you won't see anything here. If you've been playing with Kaltura Capture, then you'll see your Kaltura Captures here. Most of the uh, most of the um, editing and settings changes take place here in the My Media section. So there are, you can uh, search your media, you can uh, open each of the media and modify the settings in the media and so on. The creation action takes place right here with the add new button. So let's get some content uh, into our library. All right, so um, the very first option is media upload. And as you might expect, if you've ever used YouTube to upload a video, this is a very similar process. So uh, we've got media uploading. Let's go ahead and, and upload a piece of media. We have an interface that I can drag and drop a file to, or I can click the blue choose a file to upload button. I'm gonna choose a video that I have on my desktop and choose open. 
like any other video tool, like any other, like YouTube, like any other video hosting, the file, the longer the upload, the bigger the file, the longer the processing time. So um, while there are many reasons to keep your videos short uh, for your students, um, one of the benefits of, short, of chunking your media into shorter pieces is that they will upload and process more quickly. Um, so if you have, if you uh, would normally uh, uh, lecture for 30 minutes in your course, you might want to think about breaking that into 10 minute sections or maybe even five minute sections uh, as students can then uh, consume those in chunks as they have time, as it's distributed across your course content. And uh, a nice uh, byproduct of that is that they will upload and process more quickly in any video system, including in Kaltura. Once we've uploaded video, then we get to uh, we get a prompt to modify some of the details. So I can modify the title, like my file name, which is um, what pulls this, what this is pulled from, has these dashes in it. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of those. In fact, I'm going to call this something different. All right. Oops. Got my R. And I can add a description here. All right. Don't worry about the publishing element here. The publishing element is something that's sort of automatic as you, when we when we look at the process for embedding these videos in your course, um, that publishing part will take care of itself. It will publish to your course when you embed it in the course. I'm gonna click save. You can really click any of these three buttons. The save button will just save and you'll stay here. The go to media will help, will, will preview this video. The go to my media will go back to your media library. So. Um, Think of the My Media as your personal media library. So it says My Media, so it makes sense that these are only videos that belong to you, that you have um, ownership rights to. We're going to see in a few minutes that you can actually share ownership rights um, with other people. So other people can create videos and share editing and publishing privileges with you, um, and then they will show up in your media library. Uh, all right. so. This refresh button is your friend. So if you've ever done something and whatever that change is isn't reflected in your My Media section, you can click this little refresh button. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's already processed for me. So um, normally, and this is a very short video, this is, I think, a three minute video. Um, Normally you might see, and you'll see, I think when we do uh, the express capture video, you'll, you might see a little gear animation here in this video indicating that it's processing. But again, because this video is only about three minutes long, it processed pretty quickly. Uh, if your videos get to be 30, 45 minutes long, then you can expect to wait at least that long and maybe longer depending on demand for that video to process. So. Uh, if you want something available, uh, um, you know, give yourself at least a couple of hours uh, for that video to process um, before uh, needing to implement that video uh, in your course. All right, so now we have a, uh, a video that we uploaded via uh, the media upload feature. Let's do two more. We're going to do an express capture and a YouTube index. Interactive video we're going to leave for another workshop. That's a way that you can... Um, use any combination of videos in your My Media Library to create an interactive video experience. So for example, you could start with an introduction video and then ask students if they'd like to branch off and watch a different video, uh, one video or another video. So you might say, Are, would you like to learn more about this or would you like to learn more about that? Um, and then you can later then bring them back. You can provide multiple paths for learning. And so that's what interactive video is all about. Um, you could imagine that would be its own workshop. Kaltura Capture, I'll quickly summarize for the folks who weren't in the Kaltura Capture workshop. That is a screen recording um, uh, function in Kaltura. It's very nice. It downloads a little application that you can use to record your screen. If you've ever used Screencastify or screen, Screencast-O-Matic, that's exactly what Kaltura Capture does. One of the really nice um, features of Kaltura Capture is that it's connected to your Kaltura My Media Library. So when you finish your capture, it will upload and be available to you here to share with your courses. And then the last piece that we'll talk about at the end of the session today is the video quiz. You can create a quiz out of any video in your media, my media library. 
All right, so we've got a, a media upload grid. Oops, I didn't mean to launch that again. Hey, Jason, can I interrupt you for just a second? Mm -hmm. uh, so we did have a question. Uh, Jay, he was following along and tried to um, upload a PowerPoint, which we know is not a video, but for the media upload, are there any restrictions on what kind of uh, video they can they can upload? Yeah, that's a good question. So if it's a video, um, just about every kind of video I have been able to throw at it, it has taken. So MOVs, which are files created uh, in, in a lot of cases by Macs. So if you did a Mac screen record with QuickTime, that would upload. Um, it takes MP3s. So if you, for example, wanted to host a podcast that you recorded or a piece of original music that you recorded, you can upload an MP3. In fact, I think I have a... I think I have an MP3 here. Okay, so this is an open source piece of media that I uploaded to my media library. Um, so in terms of in terms of video, there aren't any restrictions. If you would like to create a PowerPoint presentation recording and store it in Kaltura, there are at least two good ways to do that. One of them is to narrate in PowerPoint by adding audio to your PowerPoint slides and using the feature available in uh, PowerPoint, publish to MP4. Then you can upload your MP4 here. You can also um, use Kaltura Capture to capture a live recording of your, of your um, PowerPoint slide, and then that will that recording will be recorded automatically to your My Media Library here. And again, for those of you who were not in the Kaltura Capture Workshop, you can capture just a portion of your screen. So that process generally involves capturing only the slide. And then your audio and the slide activity are captured in, uh, in the media. There, there's a third option that doesn't involve Kaltura, and that's another tool we have available to us, and that's VoiceThread. So VoiceThread also has a nice um, workflow for creating narrated PowerPoints. Um, students then access those uh, narrated presentations uh, via a VoiceThread link. Does that answer the question? That was kind of a long answer to that question. Didn't right, get a follow-up, so I think so. <laughs> okay, all right, sounds good. All right, so let's um, look at one more piece of, or two more pieces of uh, processes for creating content. Um, let's do a quick Express Capture. Express Capture is different from Kaltura Capture in that Express Capture just captures your webcam and your microphone. So this is for quick messages, um, uh, very short lectures, for example. This is just gonna be your webcam and your microphone. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on, you'll see what I mean. This does not capture your um, this does not capture your screen activity. So you can all see me now. I'm recording uh, my webcam, and it's picking up my audio as well. I've got this nice little stop button. It's a very simple interface, um, and uh, pretty foolproof. So if I click stop. All right, you can play back, decide if you like that or not. If you like it, uh, you can just click use this. It's gonna upload that video to your media library. And so maybe I've, maybe this is my module one introduction. So this might be a way to get some teacher presence into your course. If, if you wanna just give students a quick guidance about how to attack module one, and you just wanna kind of maybe talk about current events a little bit, this is probably not a video that you're gonna use again from course to course, but it's so quick to create that, um, that you wouldn't mind redoing this every semester. Um, uh, so that's one way that you could use it. So I'm introducing module one. I'm gonna click save. I'm gonna go back to my media. Again, this was so short. I wanna kind of let you look at that at that animation uh, so that you know that um, that the video is processing. So don't worry if you see that it doesn't mean it's broken. It just means it's processing. And again, the longer the video, of uh, the longer time uh, that processing will last. All right. So that's how you uh, create um, video using the Express Capture feature. The last feature I want to mention is the YouTube indexing feature, um, and Kaltura actually doesn't call doesn't call it an indexing feature. That's kind of the best way that I can describe what it's doing. Um, what this does is it captures the metadata and 
embeds a YouTube video in your media library. And then subsequently, as you can embed anything in your media library in your course, in your course. So quickly, I'll show you what that looks like. Um, well, first, let me talk about why you would do that. Um, number one, uh, nice feature, it eliminates the ads in YouTube videos. So if you index a YouTube video, for, so for example, I'll show you one that I've already done. So this is an old bluegrass song that is a video on YouTube. Um, I've indexed it here. It brought the title from YouTube, it brought the description from YouTube, and of course the video. Um, when I watch this video on YouTube, there are several ads at the front of this video. If I publish this video to my course via my media, it will actually not play those ads. It will play directly from the video. It will also, and if I just select it here, you'll see what I mean. It also plays directly in the NIU branded Kaltura player. So it also gives kind of students a kind of a, a common look and feel um, in your media library. So, so several reasons that you, you could consider using this feature. It also is nice that um, in a way that it helps you kind of organize your media in the My Media folder. So you know exactly what you've been sharing um, with your students and it's available here for you in the My Media section for quick access. I've also, I think, I think I've got a TED Talk in here. So this content is not downloaded from YouTube and uploaded to Kaltura. There would certainly be some copyright issues with that. So that's not, this, not what this is. This is sort of like building a data connection to the YouTube video and replaying it, sort of just as you would um, by embedding a video, a YouTube video on, uh, on a website. This only works if the video is public. If the video is set to unlisted or private, it, uh, this, uh, this feature doesn't work. So um, quickly how that works, you just select YouTube from the add new button. You have to give it a YouTube um, ID. So I'm gonna quickly uh, do a quick YouTube search here. And let's say we were looking for um, a lab. Maybe we wanna find a, um, maybe there's a lab that we're trying to recreate or uh, trying to put in place of an in-person lab and I find a lab that I really like, um, like maybe this one. I'm gonna play it. So I'm going to play back in YouTube, and um, one of the and this this is actually not a commercial. This is actually the bumper for the video. But many of these uh, videos will have commercials at the front end. And again, one of the benefits of this feature is that it will knock those commercials out. But I'm going to copy the URL to that video. It's you can see that it's a public video. It showed up in my search. I'm going to pop over to um, my YouTube page link and just paste it in. Click preview. It's gonna give me a little preview over here. Let me change the title and or the description and click save. And now this video will be indexed in the My Media section of the course of your, uh, of your Blackboard. All right, again, this little refresh button is your friend. Patience is your friend too. <laughs> uh, sometimes I even move too fast for the refresh button, but eventually uh, that content will show up and, and use that refresh button uh, if you need to. So you can see that this YouTube video is now indexed in the My Media section of your course or of your Blackboard. Um, all right, so those are the kind of three functions that I wanted to demonstrate. Again, we're gonna save interactive videos for later. We've got something for Kaltura Capture already in, uh, uh, in the bank and um, uh, the video quiz we'll do at the end. Are there any questions about creating content um, in uh, in Kaltura before I, I talk about how you can edit content? I'm gonna switch over to the room so I can see the chat. Jason, we do have one. Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. So Anna asked, is there an easy way to put uh, Blackboard Collaborate recordings into Kaltura, for instance, to generate captions easily? She said she's been able to download the Collaborate recordings and then upload them into Kaltura, but this YouTube integration seemed easier. So she's wondering if you can mm. provide some hints or, I don't know, uh, Yeah, quick so um, there isn't, I, I think I know uh, where your question's coming from, Anna. There isn't a feature that sort of allows you to embed other kinds of videos besides YouTube in, Cal, in a Kaltura player. So you're right that downloading an MP4 from Collab and uploading to Kaltura 
takes more time, right? It takes more processing time. You have to upload the file. It has to process. The YouTube feature is kind of just automatic because it builds a it builds an embed right in the library. Um, there, they were uh, uh, several months ago. Um, I got one of the uh, um, planned timelines for Kaltura, and they were testing other kinds of video embed. And so I don't know that Collab was on their list of things. Uh, but uh, they were looking, for example, at Vimeo, if, if there was a way to do a similar embed uh, indexing feature for Vimeo. So I will keep an eye out for that, but I don't believe that that's possible at the moment. Um, if anybody in the room has another idea, um, I'm happy to hear, yeah. But I think for now, if, if, you, if you don't want students to play back the recordings from uh, the Collaborate section of Blackboard, if you really want to download those and upload them, or download them, have them play them somewhere else, I think, Uploading them in as a, as a media upload in Kaltura is your best bet. All right, anything else? Any other questions? All right, now that we have some media in the My Media Library, and granted I had a bunch of media in here, but we've got some new media to play with. So I want to talk about, first I want to talk about this interface, and then I want to talk about what you can do with some of these videos in terms of modifying them, uh, editing the settings and uh, and the descriptions and so on. So again, this is where I have to be careful not to show you every button. So if you see a button that you really like uh, after the work, and you can ask me about it if it's, you think it's something really important, but after the workshop, jump into Kaltura and, uh, and play around, click those buttons and let us know if you need help. All right. So first thing, let's talk about this, this interface. Um, really important here, particularly as you start to get more media, is the search my media section. And I've kind of glazed over this a couple of times uh, already today, but there's something that uh, that Kaltura uses that's pretty key to uh, their overall search strategy, and that's tags. So any video that you create or index in Kaltura, you can add your own tags to them. Kaltura will also auto caption any video content that you create in Kaltura. Anything that you upload or create in Kaltura will be automatically captioned. And it will search those captions for common words and make tags out of those. Now, if, you, if I scroll down here um, to some videos that have been captioned, you'll see uh, these little guys here. These are tags. One of the things that I would recommend is as you are creating content, you may want to think about tagging your content with the course number. So for example, if I type 573 and hit enter, for me, um, and I think I have, yeah. So I've got one video for ETT 573 embedded in my media library. Now, once I have 20 or 30 videos, uh, it's gonna take me quite a while to find, uh, to find the pieces um, that I'm after. And so having that, having, the, um, having that as a tag is very helpful. All right, so um, it also searches uh, titles. It also searches captions for your search feature. Um, and so uh, it, and in this case, it, it found it in a tag. So um, that search feature is very nice. And consider adding tags to your videos. We'll take a look at where you add tag here in just a minute. You can, of course, filter. Um, you can, there are some different views, a collapsed view and a detailed view. Um, and then we have this actions tab here. This actions tab lets you take actions on multiple videos. We're going to look at a at a single video action tab here in a second. All right. So first, let's just pick a video. Um, let's pick this one. This is the one that I uploaded a few minutes ago. Uh, this is kind of a demo video, so this is not a complete presentation. I think it's maybe two or three minutes long, um, but you can see it has captioned the video. Um, it's got uh, some tags here at the bottom, um, and there are several then options uh, for me for what I can do with this video. Um, those options, well, first let's talk about this. Uh, so if there were attachments, there would be, the, I, so I could create an attachment here, I could create a PowerPoint file, I could create a data file. Um, let's, let's look at a video that might make more sense for something like that. Let's see, I've got some Excel demo captures here, maybe this one. So this piece of content was actually captured with uh, Kaltura Capture. Um, 
one of the things I'll, I'll point out right away, and you might have noticed at the beginning of the video that this sort of was a little a little fuzzy at the very beginning. Uh, this video does not have its own thumbnail. So um, you can create a thumbnail or you can select a thumbnail from the video playback. Um, but so you might have seen a little bit of, a little bit of fuzziness at the beginning. You also might notice that at the very when when a video is very first available, so the very first time it comes out of um, out of processing, you may notice that it's uh, that it may be a little fuzzy in the beginning. It does a several cycles of processing, and it gets sharper each time. YouTube does a similar process. So uh, in YouTube, very often there's a standard definition available, a version available before the high definition version is available. But then very quickly, uh, it sharpens up for you. All right, so here's an Excel filtering demonstration video. You can see all of the tags here at the bottom. Um, you might attach this Excel spreadsheet to this video if students were meant to do something with it. Um, you can search within the video. You can search within the transcript. So here's the transcript feature that I told you about. So students can bump open the transcript. Some students like to read more than they like to watch your video. So depending on the content and depending on whether the visuals are important, as I would imagine in this video they would be, um, the transcript feature can be pretty nice. This is also interesting. So students can, can click on a section of the transcript and it will take them to that portion of the video. All right, so I'm gonna put that away for now and talk about the actions tab. So the actions tab for any video is where you can get to the sort of the key modifications to the video and the video uh, properties. So um, again, we're gonna leave kind of publish alone in this interface. Uh, publishing is going to happen as we um, embed this content to Blackboard. We're gonna look at editing, analytics, um, really quickly at captioning and enriching and then launching the editor. So really quickly, I'm gonna look at edit. So the edit feature is how you can change all the settings for the video. You can change the title and the description. You can add a tag. So maybe this is almost 510, but I, I wanna make sure that I remember uh, that this is spring 2020. So I can add that as a tag. Now spring 2020 has been added to my video as a tag. And so if I wanted to search for spring 2020 videos, um, I don't need to put that content in the title to be able to search for it. That'd get kind of messy because I'd want to put the course name and the semester. So I can just put that information in the tags and that makes it searchable. All right, um, quickly running across the top here, these are all of your options. The options section is where you can set um, availability for commenting. The collaboration section is where you can share the, you can either transfer ownership to someone else or you can add collaborators. So if you want your, if someone wants your video to show up in their media library, you can add them as a collaborator. Now, this is different than the way that a course copy works. So if you embed video in your course and copy it to someone else's course, those embeds will go with. You don't need to share collaboration rights with someone for those videos to pl be playable in that copied version of the course. But if you want, if someone wanted your video to show up in their media library or vice versa, this is where you would do that. I mentioned that you can customize the thumbnail for your video. I will mention this downloads feature. This is where if you created something in Kaltura Capture, or let's say you uploaded something and you and and you lost the original and you want the original back, you can go to this Downloads tab, click this checkbox, and that will make the uh, MP4 available for you to download. The Captions tab is where you can see there's another way to get to this, a better way to get to this I'll show you in a few minutes. I mentioned that you can attach files here, so you can attach, uh, in this case, you might attach this actual uh, spreadsheet um, or some other data analysis tool. The timeline, uh, I'd love to spend 10 minutes with the timeline with you. Um, what, the, what I'll mention about the timeline is you can, uh, especially uh, interestingly, you can use the timeline to create chapters. There are actually a couple of chapters in this video already that I've created. So you, what you can do is you can create, you can add these little, so you go to any spot in the video that you want a chapter and you add this little chapter, you give it a name. So it looks like this is the new chapter two, or maybe this is um, uh, filtering by number and click save. Okay. And so now uh, 
once I refresh this, we'll see the new chapter here at the top. You can see the bookmarks listed here. All right. So replace media, I'm not sure how often you would use replace media, but you can actually replace the MP4. All right, so any questions about the base settings before we talk about how to actually edit the video itself? I'm going to back to the room so I can check the chat pod. Got a few. Um, yeah. So Jessica asked, could we use a chapter for each slide of a PowerPoint presentation? Yes, and so really interestingly, um, and I've done some testing with this, but I want to do more. But interestingly, Kaltura advertises, and it, and I have seen it. I have seen it functional that uh, Kaltura will actually detect slides. So if you do a Kaltura capture recording, or if you um, upload a recording from PowerPoint like we did, over time, and I've noticed that it's after the captions are done, it will also process and auto detect PowerPoint slides and create chapters out of them. If you didn't want to wait for that, you want to do it yourself instead, or if you had another kind of presentation, you could, of course, create those chapters for each slide. And I don't know if you noticed, but if I click back, um, it actually gives you a little image of um, what, the, what the video looks like at that moment. So that works nicely for uh, creating uh, thumbnails um, for PowerPoint presentations. Yeah. Other questions? Um, Anna just wanted to know about navigation. So. Um, how do you get back to the My Media from this particular yeah. screen? Yeah, so if I, oops, sorry. Uh, pause that. Um, so there are several ways. One of them, so I don't want to close this window yet. Um, so one of them is to just go back to the Details pane and go to, click Go to Media. And that will take you back to the media. And then you click from there, go back to My Media. Um, I, sometimes I find it faster just to close this, uh, close this tab and just click on Kaltura My Media again. Um, the way that this is embedded in Blackboard, occasionally I find myself in one of those spots like, ah, I could do it this way or I could do it that way. Ah, it's just faster just to close it here and click on My Media. What else we got? I raised my hand and my... Do I have to wait to be called on? No, no, go ahead. OK. So I actually published an MP4 file from my PowerPoint last night, uploaded it to my Blackboard course. Now, if I, but I didn't caption it. So can I go back and caption it? Sounds like I can. Mm -hmm. But then do I have to re reset it into the That's class? That's a good question. That's a good question. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, so the captions are automatic. And I'm going to show you how you can edit them. But the captions are automatic. They're really pretty good. They have capital letters. They have punctuation. But you know, proper names, uh, scientific terms, those kinds of things are um, you know, not always great using any automatic captioning. You can edit those. But once you've created the embed in your course, uh, that video will, will play back whatever that embed is. And so as soon as captioning is available, the captions will be available in the embed. If you edit the captions, the edited captions will be available as well. I think that was your question. Is that right? Maybe a more direct answer to your question is, no, you don't need to re-embed. Um, that, that all happens automatically. All right. Um, I, I, I did say that I would show you how to, uh, to edit the captions. And so that's one more thing I wanted to show you before we talk about editing the video itself. So let me just pull up uh, any video, maybe I'll pick one that has a, that's a little bit longer. Um, this is a project document uh, that I did for a course that I taught. I'm gonna go ahead and open that by clicking here on the title. And this was a project walkthrough document. So I walked through the project document as a PDF with students. I used Kaltura Capture and kind of talked them through this uh, fairly complex project. If I click here on the Actions tab, instead of choosing Edit, I'm going to choose Caption and Enrich. It's going to show me the caption orders that have been made. Um, so these are the existing requests. It was machine captions. It's completed. If I want to edit them, here's how I do it. I click this little pencil, and it opens the closed captions editor. 
I can scroll through the captions. If I click, it will bump me to that portion of the video. If I see something and I'm like, what was I saying there? That doesn't look right. I can click on that and listen to it. Uh, and then I can just make the change. Maybe it, this was supposed to be scenarios. Um, and once I'm happy with the captions, I click save. All right, so that's real quick, but it's really very simple. Um, it does have a search and replace feature. So if you've, if you said, um, uh, uh, something that that it misunderstood over and over again, maybe a proper name, a, 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 a you know a, a scientific term that you've said over and over again, and it it spelled it wrong each each time uh, the same way. You could search in the captions and replace it with something. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back to my video, and let's talk about editing the video now. All right, so we do that here in the Actions tab. And this is Launch Editor. Okay, there are lots of little details here that um, we don't have uh, another hour uh, to spend on uh, this editing video. But one of the nice things about this thing is its simplicity, okay? The kind of edits that you can make, uh, you can crop the beginning and the end. You can cut something out of the middle of the video and you can create fades. So they keep it pretty simple. Those are the things that you can do. You can crop, you can cut, and you can fade. All right, so really quickly, one of the ways to do that is to use these little yellow handlebars. So if you just have some dead space at the beginning of your video, you can just drag that. Same thing at the end. Once you're happy, you can finish. Uh, let's say I also want to cut out a little section here in the middle. This little guy zooms the timeline. I might click a section of my video, play it, so I can hear my mistake. Oh, there's my mistake. Use the scissors to split the video at that point. Play it until I my mistake is um, corrected. Pause it now, and I'm going to split it again. Now I've got this little piece floating here in the middle. If I select that piece and choose the trash can, it will delete that little section from the middle of my video. There's no need to slide these pieces around, so there's no need to slide them over and together. Um, when I click save or save as a copy, um, it will run those things through together as a single video. I'm gonna zoom way out again so I can see the end of my video, and I'm just gonna click here at the end of the video, and I'm gonna insert a fade. That's this little guy, fade out. And let's make it five seconds. That's pretty much the extent of it. So it's pretty simple, but pretty functional. Uh, it's designed to give you some really basic um, uh, editing uh, features. If you want to do anything fancier than that, then we'll have to talk about using a, a video editing tool um, outside of Kaltura before you upload your video. OK, uh, save or save as a cap, uh, copy. Save will replace the original video. Um, save a copy will, um, will save a copy of this, an additional copy of this, and keep the original. All right, so I really was just kind of messing around, so I'm just going to kind of get rid of this content. I'm not going to save it. I'm just going to close that, um, and then I'm going to pop back over to Kaltura My Media. All right, so um, aside from creating a quiz, um, those are the things that we're going to do in editing. Any questions about those before we take a look at how to get this content into Blackboard? Is it possible to, to share screen in the middle of video recording? So um, if you're using Kaltura Capture, so if you're using that feature that we talked about in last week's workshop, where you download the little capture application, it will record whatever is on your screen. So um, it also has a pause feature. So that's a really nice way to record, let's say, two slides, then click pause, then switch to your webcam, turn the recording back on, then you could switch to an Excel spreadsheet or maybe to your module in Blackboard. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. So I think if your question is, um, you know, can you mix uh, video streams and, and content, the answer is yes. And that using Kaltura Capture, um, that little pause button is your friend. Um, using the um, 
Express Capture is only your webcam and your microphone. So you, if you're going to use Express Capture, that is just for capturing those face-to-face uh, -face kind of recordings. Um, if you want to record some screen content, then you should use you should use Kaltura Capture. It allows you to do the same thing. So you can still do your webcam and your microphone, but it also gives the ability to use to record your screen. All right, any questions other than anything beyond that? All right, let's switch to Blackboard. And I'm going to show you um, three ways to integrate Kaltura content into your course. I'm going to go to Courses. And I know that some of you are using Blackboard um, original style courses, and some of you are using Blackboard um, um, ultra style courses. I'm going to go into um, the original course first. Yeah, go ahead, Megan. I've got a question. I'm, I'm not sure I understand it. Um, Anna is asking, in the Capture webinar that we just did last week, um, did we go over how to put your webcam video as a picture in picture with the screen capture? If you capture your webcam, so if you turn your webcam on in, um, here, let, me, let me jump real quick to uh, my library here uh, and find one that I've got as picture in picture. Um, I think, let's see. I don't have one quickly available to me. So um, the answer is yes, and the user has the ability to do it. So if you capture your screen and your audio and your webcam, those are stored as sort of different video streams in the video, and the user can switch back and forth between seeing your webcam, or seeing the screen, or seeing both, and both can be side by side, or um, or um, in picture in picture. And if we have time at the end, I'll I'll find a video that I can show you uh, what that looks like. All right, so um, here we are in Blackboard. I'm gonna jump into a course. I'm going to jump into an original course first. All right. Um, I first navigate to the spot where I want um, where I want my content, my video content. So I'm going to put it in this case in module two. So in module two, I want both a link and a playable embed. Those are two of the ways that you can share Kaltura content in your course. The link is built this way: build content. Kaltura embed. Now this word embed is a little misleading. When we see embed, sometimes we think playable thumbnail, but in this case, this is how you insert a link. It's going to take me to my media library and I get a blue embed button next to any video in my media library. I click the one that I want to embed and it's going to give me a playable link in my Blackboard course. Okay, notice that the description comes with another reason to make sure you include the description as you create your video. You can edit the title and the description using the standard edit tools in Blackboard, and this is going to link students directly to your video. The other way to create, to um, embed your content in, in Blackboard Original is to click build content and build an item for which for that will contain your playable thumbnail. So I'm going to build an item. This could also be in an assignment, a quiz question. Um, in this case, I'm going to I'm going to use the mashups tool, and I'm going to choose Kaltura Media, and I'm going to choose actually one of the YouTube videos that I've indexed. So instead of something that I've created myself, I'm gonna pick one of those uh, YouTube embeds, which was this Carter family song. And I'm gonna embed that as a playable thumbnail in my course. So as I mentioned, it's gonna sort of play back the YouTube video via the player here in your Blackboard. All right, so that's two ways to get content into a Blackboard original course. Um, 
Any questions before I pop over and do an ultra course? All right. Megan just gave me a shout. I think we're doing um, okay. I've been answering a few. Okay. All right. So in Ultra, this is what that looks like. Again, you find your way to the spot in the course where you want your content. I'm going to do this in module one. I'm going to add it here at the bottom. Actually, I'm going to add it here at the top. So suppose I recorded a face-to-face -face express capture introduction to the course. I'm going to put that here right at the top of my video, or right at the top of my of this module here. Um, Oops, I didn't mean to open that. I'm going to put my video right here for students to watch. We find Kaltura in the content market. Okay, so the language is a bit different here on the ultra side. So I'm going to click content market. And uh, if, if you're worried about keeping up, don't worry. We have some very specific instructions on how to make this work on the Keep Teaching page. So I'll point you to that. Uh, and we'll include links to that in the follow-up message to this workshop. So we want to go to Kaltura Embed, and everything else looks the same. You're going to get the same embed message um, next to any video that you want to watch. So here's my module one introduction. And now there's a module one, if I scroll down, there's a module one introduction, there it is, um, video for this module, and of course, I can move this wherever I like it. Students can then watch this video directly here in the Ultra course. The last thing I'll show you in this Ultra course is how to um, how to uh, play, make that a playable thumbnail. So let's suppose that uh, in module one, I also want to include that Excel uh, playable thumbnail. I'm going to click this little plus here. And instead of, of inserting something directly onto the ultra course like in original you have to create a container for it so i'm going to click create and i'm going to make a document i'm going to call that document excel demonstration i can add other content if i like but for right now i'm just going to add that video that content is found over here this is like the analogy of the mashups button in ultra so I click here on insert content. I choose insert edit LTI item. Notice the language is slightly different from the link to the embed. And now I find, uh, again, Kaltura embed. The rest looks the same. You get the same interface. You see the My Media section. You see an embed button next to each one. So I scroll down to find the video that I want to embed. Um, I find, uh, let's say, this Excel filtering demonstration. I click the embed button. And I get um, my playable thumbnail. All right. So time is running short. I want to make sure we have time for questions, but I also want to give you a little teaser of quizzes. Part of the materials that we're going to be sending you in uh, in your follow-up email uh, will include instructions for quizzes. Any questions right now before I jump to that? All right. I'm going to head back to the My Media Library here in Kaltura. As I mentioned earlier, you can create a quiz out of any video that's in your My Media Library. The interface is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, add new and video quiz. You can even do this for a YouTube indexed video. So if you index a, um, uh, a YouTube video, you can create a quiz out of that video. All right, I'm not sure if it's thinking or if I need to, maybe I didn't get that button clicked. Oh, yep, yeah, nope, I hit the wrong thing. Add new. Video quiz. Oh, maybe I was on the screen and it wasn't, I didn't see the button. So over here on the right hand side, you can see this, this button is changed now to a select button. So it wants me to select the video that I want to use in my quiz. Um, so let's say we want students to use, um, I want to keep them engaged in this little 20 minute lecture that I've got um, on literature reviews. I'm going to click select. And it takes me to a familiar interface. This is uh, similar to the video editing interface. This is the quiz interface. And it's really very simple. You put the cursor or the playhead 
where you want to add a question and you click the add question button. So I've got a correct answer and, a dis and two distractors. I can shuffle those automatically, or I can drag them around myself if I want a very specific order for those. Um, find the button, that's right. Okay. Once you're happy with that, or you can change. Once you're happy with that, you click um, save. There's also this little guy up here to give a hint, to to insert a hint for students if you want to make that available, and it's going to put a quiz question right on the timeline where you had your playhead. You'd repeat that for as many questions as you like. There are some settings over here that you can change. I'll let you take a look at those and play around with those. Oops, here it is. Um, you can show a welcome page at the beginning of the video that says, hey, there's a quiz in this video. Um, you can modify that welcome message. Uh, Students might be surprised if they are watching a video for four minutes and all of a sudden have a quiz question. Um, you could communicate that outside of the video, or you can use this welcome message to communicate it inside the video. You can give them scores, show them scores, or not show them scores, correct answers or not correct answers. Um, and you can allow them to skip or not to skip or and or to change their answers. All right. So once you have, are happy with your quiz, you're happy with the number of questions you have in the settings that you like, you can click Done. And I'm going to click go to media page. And it's going to take me to, um, to my new quiz now. It will probably take a few minutes to, to load up. But um, because time is running short, I'll let you know that when students get to that moment in the video, they'll be prompted to answer that quiz question. Those quiz questions can be tracked as part of Blackboard. And that's the last thing I'll show you in the last minute of our workshop. I'm going to pop over here to a course and show you in an original course how to insert a quiz. And of course, I'm happy to hang around after the session if you have questions that we haven't answered yet. So I'm going to just jump to a spot in my course where I want this quiz uh, here in module two. Like you would insert any other test in Blackboard, I'm going to go to assessments and, excuse me, uh, assessments and, oh, there it is. Sorry. Sorry, it's under build, under build content. Under build content. Down here, uh, it says in video quiz. So that's a little tricky because it doesn't say Kaltura. But in video quiz is what you're after. That is in the, uh, uh, the help file that we're sending you along with. It's going to show you all of the quizzes that you have in your library, including the one I just created. I'm going to click the embed. And it's going to insert uh, that as a video quiz here. The answers to students' questions will be stored in a Blackboard uh, Grade Center item. If you've used multiple choice or true false and have marked a correct answer, it will just score that for you as a Blackboard quiz. If you've used the fill in the blanks, then you'll have to grade that quiz manually. All right. 